computer. Let's do it. All right, who else I got up here? I got some more people up here. Boom. All right, so what I'm going to do right now just to make sure I just, I'm just about to mute every. So everyone right now is muted. So, of course, you know, if you do have a question, feel free to unmute, ask the question. Only reason why I did the mute is because, you know, sometimes some background noise, definitely get distracted. So feel free to come off mute and say, hey, I got a question or whatnot while I'm going through it. Going to quickly go through the information here because we do got some new people on the call. And I just want to really, I mean, before I show you what I'm trading, how I'm making money, you need to know what markets I'm in, right? So basically, this is the Forex and crypto market, okay? Um, my brand is Trade the Trends. Um, the reason why I came up with this brand is because one thing I found out in investing and trading is the trend is your friend. You always want to go with the trend. You never really want to go against the trend, right? That's a bad technique into trading, okay? So uh, tra trade the trends, and I threw a Z on it. The reason why I threw a Z on it is because, come on, Harry, you know, bad news, and that's what a Z, right? So, you know, I still got my roots in there, still evolving. Um, and still doing things. I've been trading for about three years. Uh, come this well, this past March, um, I've been trading in Forex. Um, Forex started the ball rolling into understanding gold and understanding crypto. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really going into what's next, let's talk about what is the foreign exchange market, right? I've heard Forex. I've looked at Forex. The number four and X, that's all that's coming to me, right? No. So the Forex um, market is a $5.3 trillion day market. Um, based on its volume, it's the largest market in the world because guess what? Guys, we use money every day, right? So money is always doing what? Moving. This is why the currency markets are the largest markets because when the banks in Europe are closing, you know, your banks in Tokyo are opening. When the banks in Tokyo are closing, guess what? The banks here in the U.S. are opening. So it's, it's 24 hours a day, five days a week, right? The buying and selling is going on. So we're able to trade basically Sunday through Friday at open, open market opens Sunday at around 4 PM closes around Friday at 5 PM. Right? So from Sunday to Friday, but I only trade Sunday through Wednesday. I'll talk about that a little later. Why I choose to trade during those time frames. All right. So cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency is the new wave. Everybody heard about Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is the most well known and also has made a lot of millionaires uh, since I'm um, being established here in 2009, 2010, right? Because at one point, Bitcoin was 10 cents. You guys saw just this past week and currently Bitcoin is at $11,000 per coin or per share in the stock world, how, how stocks would say shares, right? So the thing about that is, let me make sure I got my right mic set up. Yep, got my mic in there. Okay. Oh, I did not want to go there. All right, so crypto digital currency is tracked on an online ledger. The ledger is known as the blockchain. The crazy part, we've actually slowly been moving into the cryptocurrency space for a while now, right? You guys remember when we first got debit and credit cards, right? You know, some of our grandparents said, hey, man, I, I like to feel my money, right? Because now I have a, a plastic card that's attached to my bank or a ledger that's letting the next person know that, hey, this card has this much money in a ledger somewhere in the bank's books, right? So we've actually been transitioning to digital currency for a while, right? In 1970, basically what happened is uh, Richard Nixon said, hey, I'm going to, uh, you know, temporarily stop the connection of gold into dollars because at that point we had the gold standard. So our money was what? Practically good as gold because um, for every dollar, it was worth a percentage or a portion of gold, right? But then once he actually uh, diminished that, that made for a flexible currency, quote unquote. And what that means is a fiat currency. And what a fiat currency is, is money that can be made from nothing, guys. Money that can be made from nothing, which is paper money, okay? They can print more money. You guys heard of inflation. Basically, what inflation is, is a promise to tax you, right? That's what our government Federal Reserve does. They promise to tax us as much as they can, right? So instead of saying, hey, these are the taxes, what they do is they saturate the market with more paper dollar bills out of thin air, and it seems like the prices of, of everything goes up. The price of a loaf of bread used to be 25 cents. Now it's almost $3, right? So 
it's not the price of actual things are going up, but it's actually the value of the dollar that's decreasing. And that's why we look into cryptocurrency investing into uh, Forex trading is because we need to figure out a way to multiply our money. Because if we don't get a 3% raise minimum yearly, we're falling behind because inflation rises at three to 5% on an annual basis. So we need to know that. Hopefully, um, you know, some people knew that. If not, hey, you know, um, I didn't know at one point either, but guess what? We're here now, we're gonna get the information. And again, feel free to ask any questions. And if you don't have your mic on, feel free to, you know, put something in the chat box, you know, if you wanna, um, in the chat. Okay, so when's the best times to trade? Okay, this goes into times, right? We see Sydney, right? This is the Australian, um, Australian time zone. So these are when the banks are opening in Australia at 6 p.m. Eastern time and closing at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? Then as you can see, Tokyo kind of overlaps. You know, um, the banks there are opening at 7 p.m. EST and closing at 4 a.m. EST. And then the London session, when the banks in London, and I love the London session because I like to trade the Great Britain pairs during this time. And I have an awesome London strategy that I use as well if you're up at 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, but at 3 a.m. to 12 p.m., you have your London session. And then from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you have the banks in New York, of course, opening up, which makes sense. Eight to five, right? You know, so as you guys can see, the times overlap. So when one is opening and closing, another one is opening and closing, right? You know, so this is how it allows that money and that volume to always be moving because guess what? Hey, the banks are always moving, um, except for on weekends and, of course, certain holidays, right? We know the banks are closed on certain holidays. So those Yo, are days. Yeah, go ahead. You going to send this out or do I need to take notes? Uh, I mean, definitely want to take notes, but I can send it. Yeah, all right. I can also send it and I'm recording it. So, okay. I'm recording it. So I'm going to put it on my YouTube and I, I think you uh, subscribe to the YouTube. So it'll be up there tonight. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Bet. Um, yeah. So going over the markets. Okay. So next, right. Who, who's in this market, Travis, who's participating in this market. The first major players, as you guys can see, is your commercial and your central banks. How many people on the call right now bank with either Wells Fargo, Bank of America, a credit union, or any bank in the U S right? Guess what? They're trading your money. <laughs> That's what happens. Not only do they just loan your money out. We know banks give out loans, but guess what? Your bank is loaning your money to other people and creating 4% interest, 5%, 10% interest. And they're offering you mm, somewhat as most between maybe 1% a year or 0.01% per year, right? You know, and, and do we think that's fair, right? That's my hard working money where the banks are making millions and they're paying me pennies on a dollar, right? You know, I know a gentleman um, I had a friend, I asked me, he had about 20,000 plus in the bank. And he was actually probably making about, I want to say maybe a dollar a month in interest, a dollar. So basically at the end of the year, $12 on almost 20 grand. Okay. What I'm showing you is Forex and crypto. You have the ability to make $12 a day. Um, if you had 20 grand in your brokered account, oh man, 10%. Guys, we talk about making $120 per week or per day right? That's the ability. And I'm going to show you more about that. But yes, your banks are trading your money uh, in this market. That's why there's so much money movement because that's where all our money is. Um, if you've ever used Amazon or eBay, you bought something from China or Europe, right? Guess what has to be done? Your dollar has to be exchanged for the local currency. And in order to do that, there's an exchange rate. Uh, a lot of people, I know, I got people on this line who've been traveling, right? Callie, I know you've been overseas to the Philippines. Harry, I know you, you're a person that travel a lot as well. And hopefully my other people here travel too. And they've seen at the airports, these currency exchanges, right? You know, so when people locally come from Europe and need to exchange for the dollar or go to the dollar to Japan and need to change for the Japanese yen, there's a fee, right? And that fee goes up and down, okay? And that's what we trade. We basically trade that the value in euros versus dollar is going to go up or down. So in this market, we can actually make money buying and we can make money selling. That's what I love about this market. Um, you also have large corporations and investments in hedge funds. Okay, Harry, you have some? Yeah, what are we buying what, and what are we selling? Well, that depends on the pair. So that's going to go into when I start talking about pairs. 
and and that's really what's going to hit home at like what are you buying selling it depends on the pair okay so this is a, the market that we'll be dealing with is the exchange of currencies between different nations the foreign exchange market that's the official name of this market okay yep the foreign exchange market but i'm gonna answer that question when i go to the next um presentation about pips pairs and lots so you understand the little vocabulary a little bit more but um in this first one i'm not going to get too in depth because i don't want to uh, you know confuse any beginners but i'm gonna okay. give you little by little uh record it um and allow you to kind of revisit it you know learn it take the notes and then on thursday of course i'm gonna go a little bit further and then next week a little bit further if that makes sense cool gotcha yep absolutely good questions though brody all right so of course i always like to leave with a nice quote uh after each you know just small uh choice um what what mr warren buffett says is if you never figure out a way to make money you sleep you will work into the day you die and the reason why you're on this call is because you do not want to wait until you're 70 in your 70s and your late 60s to retire and then live the good life guys because um the year of the pensions is is long gone our 401ks are not set up for us to be successful right if you have a 401k right now who what market is your 401k invested in probably we don't know right how much money should you have by the age of 65 probably don't know right because our 401k what our jobs do <laughs> is also trade uh, our 401k and these exchanges as well and different investments and make money as well for example uh, a lot of people may have a 401k that usually does something like hey we'll match up to three percent oh man i take three percent right Basically, what they're doing is you're giving your job money back. That's the first no-no, right? We're giving, we're giving our job money back after we're already slaving 40 to 60, 60 hours sometimes. We're giving our job money back, and they're making more money off of us. They're making about 10%. They're giving us three, and they're keeping that 7% spread. That's usually what's happening. So what, when I found out about researching and things like that, um, I actually got upset. I'm like, yo, why don't I know this? Why don't I know this? And if the banks are doing it, if my jobs are doing it, can I figure out how to do it myself? Right. That was that's key. That's key number one. All right. So let me see where is that thing at? My man Cali out here, man. My guys with the dreads on tonight. I see y'all. Harry got the dreads, Cali with the dreads out. I see y'all. RJ in here. I can't see you, RJ, but if you got dreads, salute. All right, so where is this not now? Where is this thing at? Boom, there we go. And basically, and probably next week, and then shoot, man, I might get into some support and resistance too while we're here. I want to keep it light, though. I don't want to keep it, I don't want to cram a whole lot in. I just want to keep it light. All right. I'm about to bring this over here. All right. So let's play this. All right. And this is already, it's, it has a video on the YouTube, but I want to keep this one in, in house. So pairs, pips, and lots. Okay. A little vocabulary. So first thing like Harry was asking about, you know, what, what are we trading, right? What are we, let me swap this because I need this over here. Uh, what are we trading, right? We're trading a currency pair, right? So if you've ever seen, you know, my post, if you're in the market hackers group I added you to, and you see, you know, stuff that looks like Euro USD, um, JPY USD, what we're trading is a pair, right? We have a base, then we have a quote, okay? The base is the first pair in the front. EUR is the Euro. USD, of course, is US dollar, the quote. So what this means, right? is that in this case, if I'm selling, if I click sell Euro USD, which means I'm selling the Euro and buying the US dollar, okay? Which basically means is that the, the, if I'm selling, that means the value of Euros and dollars is going down. So that means the exchange rate is going to start getting cheaper to exchange Euros to USD. If that, uh, hopefully that makes sense that I broke it down that way. So if I buy, basically what I'm saying is that I'm buying the euro and selling the dollar. That means I'm buying in the sense of that the euro value in dollars is going to increase when I buy. The euro's value in dollars is going to go up. 
if I buy, if I sell, the, the euro value, value in dollars is going down, right? So this is how we can actually make money where the market goes up or the market goes down, right? Because we can say, hey, it's almost like we're making an educated guess. Your euro USD is like your stock options. Let's say, let's say this is Apple, right? So I said, hey, the value of Apple is going up, so I buy, right? The value of Apple is going down, so I sell. And that's how we make money. And my next video on Thursday, I'm going to talk more about the uptrends, the downtrends, and how to identify uptrend and the downtrend so you know when to trade with the trends, as well as support and resistance, which is levels of, uh, levels of floors and ceilings of when you want to enter and exit trades possibly. All right, so wait, so in, yeah, I'm about to say any questions. Go ahead. So with, with this example right here, with mm -hmm. it being 64 euros to 65 United States dollars, what's the, what do these numbers represent? Gotcha. So these numbers represent the value or the exchange rate. So the exchange rate, because of course there's a spread. If you see one point, it's actually 1.3064. That's the four number. 1.3065 so there's a spread right you know of a broker you know just a quick example anytime you actually pay a broker you pay the spread that's how the broker makes money but those numbers are the actual value that you get in the market at okay so for example at 1.3064 if i enter a sale I, i'm gonna be in at 64 right if i enter a buy i'm getting in at 65 okay so if i if i buy euro right now mm -hmm. i'll get it for 64 right you'll you'll buy it in at that price but what okay. you're doing is that you you are predicting that 1.3065 is possibly going to go to 1.3070 and move five points gotcha okay okay you know so I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be proactive right absolutely you want to be like i want to sell because i know it's going to keep going down right or I want to buy because it's going up. This is the difference between trading and investing, right? Investing, right? You get in at a price and you only make money when it goes up, right? But in trading, you can actually make money up or down. And so that's what goes into what next is going into the PIP, right? So here's the example right here, PIPs, right? PIPs is the movement and this is how we make money. So example, you are USD. Like Harry, you're saying, I'm gonna buy. If I buy your USD at one dollar and thirty-five cents, right? It's broken down to crazy decimals, but that's basically the exchange rate, one thirty-five. So it's one dot three five zero zero, and it moves to one point three five zero one, and I put a buy. I just made one pip, okay? And the value of the pips is gonna be on the next slide, okay? So let's look at USD JPY. So whenever you have a pair that has JPY in it, the numbers are going to look like at the bottom, right? Whereas the, the PIP is, where's my mouse at? My mouse is invisible. So anything, um, USD, Euro pairs, 1.3500. You see they're longer numbers. Well, any JPY pair is going to look like 98.90, for example because we're looking at the second decimal, the second number from the decimal on JPY pairs, whereas other pairs that are not JPY, the pip is gonna be the fourth number from the right on the decimal, if that makes sense. As you can see, it goes 3500 to 3501. That's the fourth number from the decimal. Where the JPY is the second number from the decimal, you see it goes from 0 0.90 to 0 0.91. That's the same pip. Okay, and the PIP, the definition is, is a very small measure of change in currency pair in the Forex market. This is usually 0 0.0001 for US dollar related pairs, right? Whereas JPY related pairs will be 0 0.01. Hey, how, how often do these PIPs go up? How often do like they go up and go down? Um, well, they are moving 24 hours a day, five days a week. They're always moving. The exchange rate is always moving. Oh, okay. Yep, uh, and uh, it gets it moves a lot faster in crypto because uh, cryptocurrency is decentralized. So, like Bitcoin, like man, I made shoot, I made like two hundred dollars in one night. 
um, because it moved like a thousand pips because it, it went from 10k to over 11k. Mm. We still buy crypto. I answer him in a second. So, so going back real quick, you got your pair, right? Your USD. You got the pips, right? That's how we make money. So the whole thing is okay. How much can I make per pip, right? And that depends on your account, right? Because as you can see, we got names for it. Um, at the bottom, you see one nano lot. Um, I don't know any brokers that use a nano lot, but for educational purposes, it's basically trading pennies, right? But I don't know of any brokers that I use that use pennies, right? So we're gonna skip that for a second. But one micro lot, a micro lot volume, as you can see, is 0 0.01 which is worth 10 cents. So if we move that Euro USD and we had a micro lot that's 10 cents, guess what? Harrison, you put in a trade and it went up one pip at 10 cents, you just made 10 cents, right? Basically, right? So if it goes up 10 pips, as you can see, 0 0.01 times 10 pips would be a dollar, right? So if I, if I put a, a 10 cent trade in, right? I'm risking 10 cents per pip and it goes up 10 pips. I just made a dollar. Okay. If I use a mini lot, which is, um, look to be a 0 0.1 volume, that's considered a dollar per pip. Okay. So in the same scenario, if it still goes up 10 pips at a dollar per pip, I made $10, right? This is how, you know, people make a lot of money with not so many pips because they leverage a lot more. Okay, and as you can see, the standard lot, this is where the big boys play. Um, <laughs> the big boys, right? This is $10 per pip, okay? And this means if it goes up the same 10 pips that you did at 10 cents, but you're risking $10, you've now made $100 on that one trade. Um, a lot of times the next question is, Travis, why would I risk 10 cents and get a dollar if I can risk $10 and make $100? Good question, right? Um, and that's usually because how much money are you looking to invest? And that's why it says proper risk management. Proper risk management, for example, if you start with a $100 account, your first trade, are you going to go in at $10 per pip? No, right? Because if it goes 10 pips the wrong way, your $100 is gone, right? That's not proper risk management. You only want to risk 1% to 3% of your overall account right? One to 3% of your overall account, no matter what that number is. So if it's a hundred dollars, you only want to risk one to $3. So you are going to be trading at 10 cents. Whereas, whereas if you have a thousand dollar account, guess what? Now I'm risking 10 to $30 per trade. So now I can go to a mini lot. Okay. If now if I'm at 5,000 to $10,000 in my brokerage account, of course I'm using standard lots because now I'm risking a hundred to three hundred dollars you know per trade um to make the big bucks so it's about risk reward right um whatever you're risking to get is basically what you're offering to do and you and usually your take profits wants to be like a one to four ratio if i'm risking one to three dollars um in my trading i'm looking to get at least five to ten dollars in my possible take profits right it has to make sense i don't want to risk a dollar to get a dollar right? You know, that's, that's one for one ratio. That's not the type of ratios we're looking for. Okay. So, um, uh, one thing Les Brown says, I listen to a lot of Les Brown. He says, want shows up in conversation, but expectations show up in behavior. What this means basically is judge a tree by the fruit it bears, not by the fruit, not by the fruit it talks about. Okay. A lot of people talk about what they want. A lot of people talk about it, but judge them by their actions and what they do. So based on what we've seen so far, y'all, what questions do y'all have? And again, this is going to be recorded. If you got some, let's, let's get it. Let me see. You're going to look like you're trying to unmute, Callie. Are you unmuting? I don't even know. Man, I don't even think, bro, I don't think your, uh, your voice is on, Cal. Man, he about to mess around. I'm about to call him. <laughs> so Harrison, Harry, you got any questions? What you got? Um, my thing is, so you can start an account with like a hundred dollars. Absolutely. 
Okay, and you can you can build that account until you get comfortable to a thousand, and then move to five thousand. Absolutely. And the right. one thing the one thing about trading is, I started out with the education, right? You know, now we got tools and softwares that I use that makes the learning curve a lot shorter. Like when I mean short, I mean like instead of waiting nine, 90 days to really learn how to enter in a proper trade to be profitable, bro, I mean, you can get started and be profitable in like 72 hours. Yeah. Right? But what I do want to show you, I want to bring up my Excel spreadsheet. And this is what I use to really make my plan based on what I think is proper, right? And Callie, we kind of talked about this earlier when we were at work about, you know, growing it to this account. So, so Harrison, let me ask you a question. How much money are, would you like to make in your first 30, 60, 90 days to be serious about trading and investing? In my in the next 30, 60, 90 days, if I can make a hundred dollars. Right. Per month. If I can make per month, if I can make 500 per month. Got you. Okay. That, that's, that's understandable. So my next question would be how much risk capital do you have to invest that's going to help you generate that $500 per month? $500. $500 okay, $500. So let's talk about it, right? So what I like to do is I like to be over conservative when I'm giving estimates, right? Because, uh, you know, I like to be as realistic as possible. The bad part is, of course, I can't guarantee you're going to make anything, right? But I can look at what I've done in the past and the plan. So for example, at a $500 account, can you see, you can see this, right? Yeah. All right, so at a $500 account, at just 5% a week, right? And I'm already talking about the banks ain't giving you this in a year, right? right. But Make we're talking, right, but we about to do this in a week. So after your first week, guess what we're doing? We're, we're, you're already making $25 week one, right? Now your account is $525. Week Hold two. On, I can't see it. Make it bigger. You can't see it. Oh, I probably need to zoom. Dang, let's zoom, Joan. That. Man, let me see. It's on Control Z or something out here, ain't it? Can I do some Control Z? Nah. Uh, go to. Uh, all right. You see oh, at the. I see, I see it. Yeah, I got you. Boom. Tell me if that's better. That's perfect. All right. So yeah. So so five hundred dollars your starting balance. Week one at five percent growth. You've made $25. So now your account is at $525 after a week. First off, when I saw this the first time, bro, I was so like, I was like, OMG, right? Because I know my bank would never offer me $25 a year on that. And I just did it in a week. So by that, by that point, right, we're, we're compounding interest, right? Rule of 72. They ain't teach us this in school. They don't, don't want us to know this part. So now my $525, so now I need to do 5% of that which is now that's $26, right? So now I'm at 551 after week two. So basically, as you can see, after 12 weeks, which is 90 days, right? 12 weeks, you know, and this is in a perfect world. If the market works out perfectly for you, after 12 weeks, which is three months, your 25, your account is now up to almost $900 and you're making 40 plus dollars a week, okay? So that's after 90 days. But what that's you want, yeah, go ahead. That's what the market doing what you wanted to do. That's right. What, that's that's in a perfect world, right? What's gonna happen is, and that's why I say five percent, because even what I've noticed is even if the market is like trash for the week, you could do five percent. What what happens is that a lot of people try to be greedy and go 10 or 15 percent, and the market is the market is doing too much for you to grow it that much in that week. Okay. If that makes sense. So so what's going to happen is, for example, say you get to week four, oh, man, I'm at 600. Hey, I take a loss, and I'm at 580. So what you're doing, your plan is like, okay, I'm back at week three. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So you don't you try to, to compensate. You don't try to go 10% the next week. Nope. You don't try. Nope, not at all. When you do that, that's when, in my, in, in my opinion, and also what I've done, I've lost every time. Every time I go outside my strategy, and try to revenge trade, right? It never works out in my favor because I'm like, dang, man. Or, or for example, what can happen here is, oh, I made 5%. Bro, what if I made 50%? Yeah. Dang, you know what I'm saying? 
that could have been 250. I could have made 250, then I risk it, and guess what? Now my 500 gone because I over leverage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I'm assed out, <laughs> like literally. Yeah. So the th that's why it's so important as your consultant is me to ask the right questions and give you what's realistic and then see if it makes sense for you. Like you so, said, yeah, go ahead. So it sounds like the name of the game is to really find those consistent trends within the market and just capitalize on those small trends. If you're able to find like several small moments of like escalation and pips. Yep, yep. And just capitalize on those small moments a lot of times, then you'll be able to build revenue over. So you pretty much just got to watch the market and become uh, familiar with like how to, how to how to move. Exactly, exactly. That's it. Because where you at, your plan, see what your plan will do for you to get to that $100, and this is $100 per week, right? Because $100 per week puts you at $400 you know, dollars a month, right? So if you're starting with $500 and you're being conservative, it's going to take you a little bit more. And so at 23 weeks, that would be what? Six months, right? So six, seven, eight, so almost about eight to nine months. So the question right now would be, okay, Harrison, is it worth you investing? Because like I said, the uh, investing, because of course you got to do two things. You either got to, you're going to have to learn the skill to do it, or you're going to have to pay for the software that's going to do it for you, right? So is it going to be worth investing this time and this money to get to that after nine months? That that will be the whole question. Right, based on what you want to do, can you put in five hours a week learning the support, the resistance, the ups and downs, the when to get in, when to exit, you know, and putting in the work for nine a minimum of nine months. Right? It's almost like school. Like we don't go to college saying we're gonna graduate in 30 days. Right? We go, we gotta go full. Right. So we gotta know based on that, are you willing to do nine months? Because what's gonna happen is, like I said. Um, the education, I mean, you can go on YouTube. I can help you as much as possible, but you know what I'm saying? The best thing is going to be kind of what I did either, you know, uh, sign up for the right trainings from people that's been doing this shit 23 plus years, like I did. And cause they've made the money already or purchase a software. And that's what I'm going to show y'all about the tools and resources I have. And then at that point you make the best decision. So what I did was my whole goal was like a 500. See, the thing is, once you get to nine months, oh, I'm making a 100. But let's think about once you get to a year. See if you stuck with this for a year, right? Your account goes after a year at 5% weekly, right? To 500 to six grand. And now six grand at, at making 5% a week is almost an extra 286 a week. So now we're talking about extra six to $700 after a year's time. Is it, is it worth it, right? Because if you're paying for the courses month by month, you know, um, and if you don't get the free, the free option, because we do have a free option I'll talk about too, um, happening, my whole thing was, am I willing to risk? Because I put in, like, I'm going to lose some money. I know it. If I'm manually trading. This is my first time doing it, right? I know Warren Buffett loses money, so I know I'm going to lose a few dollars. So, my whole thing was overall, I'm not willing to risk one or two grand where at the end of the year, I'm, 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 I'm at six grand total and I'm generating almost 300 a month. Is it, is two grand worth that, right? And then it's like, if it is, all right, let's do it. If it's not, then I need to change some things. Maybe I change how much my initial investment is or I change my expectations of what I need. Right. That's how the my, my consultant piece comes in. But that's exactly where you wanted to go with five hundred dollars. My recommendation would be, can it be done? Yes. But are you willing to wait eight, nine months to put in the, the work weekly, you know, um, to get it there in an eight to nine month time frame? If you like, nah, bro, I want to do it in six. That's when we got to say, well, Harry, you probably need to put up a thousand. At five percent. Right you know, or you need to say, Hey, and, and maneuver some numbers around if that makes sense. Okay. Cool. Because after, cause once you get after a year, bro, shoot, 
after a year, she once you get to that that jump, get to like uh what's that? Uh that's one year, two, three. So basically after like 14 months, your joint making you 400 a, a week, right? That's an extra thousand dollars, right? And that's just trading. You're not recruiting anybody, you're not telling anybody. I haven't even talked to y'all about the affiliate uh, you know, side if you choose to do that. This is just strictly using the skill, learning the skill, using the software, trading yourself, being locked in the basement, like I'm right now with a green screen, so it looked like I got Bitcoins around me, but, <laughs> and, and, just, and just make money. You know what I'm saying? That, that's option one, right? And this is what I use to keep myself on track. So Can you show me um, how, how I need to move on, the, on my little practice account? Oh yeah, we could do that junk. Hold on. And do you have like a um a context or like a reference where how do you remember all the different countries? What you mean, the time zones? Or no, just like the different places to trade. Like how do you know like JP GP I mean JPY was mm -hmm. Japan? Well, it just came with really um practice and you know repetition. Because, like, bro, when I first looked at day one, I was like, yo, I used to see people post the stuff I'm posting. I'm like, bro, what is them blue numbers that they're posting? Like, I didn't know. So, the, like, the program that I have, you know, that I purchased and that's for sale basically has everything in order, right? That's why I went with it because you can go to YouTube. What I would suggest at this point is go to YouTube and see what beginner information you can find because it was easy for me because it was in one spot and okay. that's why i paid for it you know what i'm saying because i'm like i don't gotta find this on youtube he all over the place it really goes from basics one two three four all that stuff but yeah you learn and then you can go on google too and put in forex pairs and uh sometimes like the posts i had i got one with it to tell you the pairs Right. So you can print it out and keep it in your, on your desk like a little paper or something. And, you know, once you, you once you mess with them and play with them, it, you're going to know them. like Swiss Frank is like CHF. I don't know why. How is Swiss Frank CHF? I don't know. Right. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Like New Zealand dollars, NZD, Canadian dollars, K C A D. Right. What's, you know, what's AUD? AUD is Australian dollar. OK. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. So, real quick, any questions before I pull down this Excel spreadsheet? Any questions on that joint? Cool. All right. So, I am going to pull up some stuff real quick. I'm going to, where is, oh, there you go. My Google Chrome. Google. Yeah, this joint taking a little old day ago. And, and Harry, like, I remember, like, bro, you you were the first person, I, when I first started training, you were the first person I ever told about this joint. I know, man. I remember, man. Ever. I was talking to him. And we was eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to my homeboy. He mentioned you all the way down, all the way down here. Mm -hmm. who, who was that? Uh, Jarvis. 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 I think, yeah, I think he's been on a call with you for one time. Probably, probably. Yeah. All right, so boom. So I mark his live. This is when I first got introduced to it. Um, the crazy part was, this, the crazy story was, you, hey, Harry, you remember I used to have a crazy waves, bro. You remember yeah. the waves to be sick, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm all right, but I'm thinning on top a little bit now. <laughs> but I was on YouTube watching some cats that, that wave, like they brushing and stuff. I'm like, bro, I'm like, bro, what do these cats do for money? Cause all they doing is BSing. Like this dude is like 19, he got a condo, he got a BMW. So I inbox him, I go in the DM, right? I'm all in bro DM, right? Like, bro, <laughs> what do you do? He like, I trade Forex. So next thing you know, I'm researching like a mug, you know? And crazy part, the dude, my my actually my man Justin, I was his supervisor at work. He posted about I mark his live, and they trade forex. I'm like, bro, like that's crazy. 
I want to get in. And the reason why I got in was because everybody I reached out to about Forex said, hey, I will send you my trades and you can copy and paste my trades. My question was, do you teach? Right? I want to learn, right? Because without you, I ain't got nothing. Okay? And I can't be like that. I can't live like that. That's not what I'm trying to do. Let me see here. Let me go back up here. Let me get right where we at, where we at. You still got a copy of those trades, though, so when, when you learn, right? Well, see, the thing was, when I copy the trades, I don't know why, why we're buying and selling this trade. It's like I got to guess, right? So, like I said, that's the whole thing um, where I'm not learning anything. It says, you have not purchased the package yet. What? This is retarded. How did I not purchase a package? Like, what are you talking about? Well, it's probably because I ain't been in this zone in a while. <laughs> but this zone is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this zone is killing me. I'm in my back office, but it says I don't have my subscription, which is weird. I was just in this junk. But basically, what we have here, I'm going to go over the packages. So can, can you see the screen? All right. So basically, the one thing that I look at, you know, anybody beginning is going to be the Platinum Pack, right? Because this gives you the Forex and Crypto Academy. And what this does, it takes you from basic, intermediate, uh, market geometry, advanced level courses, that are pre-recorded videos plus live trainings, right? And IML TV sessions. So not only do you get the, the basic information and the re recorded sessions, pips, pairs, lots, support resistance, what is a swap, how to um, bearish and bullish forms and Fibonacci's and, you know, all the stuff, indicators and stuff, you know, about trading and update it. But you get live sessions like this, like how we on the live session. The only difference is you're partnering with people that have been trading for 20 plus years and are documented six and seven figure earners in trading. You know, so that's why I say, yo, like, yo, you, your best bet is to pay that 161 and get the knowledge. That's how I got it. But with that, you're going to get your harmonic scanner, which is phenomenal. Right, Harry, you fish, right? I know you, you're a fisherman. So, you ever been on one of them boats that got them scanners that show you where the pool of fish are? Yeah. That's basically what this scanner does. It basically scans the market for you and say, yo, this is a possible entry or exit point, right? So it assists you in the beginning, which is good. Um, and um, it, it gets you everything you need. We also got other packages. Uh, if you just want Forex crypto, you want copy and paste trades, all that extra stuff. You know, you can get, but if we're starting to do something, you know, it's, I always say start at the Platinum Package, 161 Like I said, it's the same price as the software. Update your car. I can't believe, like, I'm looking at this junk. They must have updated some because I've been paying this junk faithfully every month, which is weird. But that's option one. The thing about learning the skill, like I said, is the learning curve. Um, it took me a good 90 days. So basically what that meant for me was, Travis, are you willing to pay 160 a month for a year? That was my first job. I'm going to get this thing a year. Are, are you willing to pay 161 a year to learn a skill set where you can actually make uh, 500 to $1,000 yourself on a monthly basis? Which, which, again, rounds about a little less than two grand. A little less than two grand, right? But like I said, would it be worth it? To me, it was worth it. You know what I'm saying? Because if after a year or maybe sooner, I was making five hundred to thousand dollars a month, I recouped that in two months after that year, and now I'm already in profits. Right? It was to me, it was worth it. To some, it may not be. Like I said, we all got bills, we all got things. You know, some people, you know, value things differently, and I totally understand. Um, I'd be lying if I said I did. But the next thing I want to bring up is basically what's really been the best thing smoking for me 
is trading software, right? Because trading software allows allows you to be in the market sooner, right? And it allows you to make money. But with the program, we also have online trainings that are teaching you along the way. So yes, you're basically copying everything I do, but I'm still offering to teach you along the way. And as you can see here, if you can see it, this is a real, you can see it say real, you know, real account. So that's real money in a, in a bank. This is a hundred dollar live account. And, and I wanted to do five. I mean, what was my goal? Oh man, let me see. Let me look. I don't remember what the goal was on this one. Let me see properties input. The goal this week was 5%, right? So I've done 10, 10 and five. So basically I'm, my account has grown over 25%. It started at a hundred dollar account and now I'm at 29, 129.10. So on a hundred dollar account, that's not bad. If this was a thousand dollar account, that would be an extra, um, you know, $290, right? But like I said, so on and so on based on investment. So all you do with the software is of course you, you pay for it just like the education. Um, you download it to your computer. You would need a VPS. Anybody ever heard of a VPS? Uh, it's a virtual private server. It's almost like having the, the cloud on your computer because the software is always moving, right? And you can see here it says weekly goal reached. Okay, what this means is once I download it, as you guys see Trade Ringer, I take it here, I download it from my back office because I paid to have the license. I download it, I go to file, I go to data folder, I download it in here, do all that good stuff, and I, I walk you through all that stuff. Boom. And on Sunday night, what I do is I come to my EuroUSD, UJ, and my other chart set. And it's usually EJ as well. And I put the software on each of those three charts. And immediately, I start trading. Immediately. I start trading immediately. It, it basically does it for you. It does all the trading for you. Okay. And what it does is you set your own weekly goal. As you guys saw, I can set my own goals. I can make it 5% equity protector. What that means is that's your stop loss. That means if my account goes the wrong way, if I lose this much money, I don't want to lose no more money. So <laughs> it's a safety net. <laughs> The software has a safety net. As you see, mine's at 100. That means I have no safety net. I took, the, I took all the training wheels off because I'm risking it, right? This is a $100 account. It's recommended. to. I recommend when you're using software or really trading, my recommendation is always start at $1,000 because $1,000 puts you in a position to get to what everyone usually says I want to get to. Like you said, four or $500 a month. A thousand dollars at five to ten percent will get you around three fifty to five hundred dollars a month, right? It it gets you there sooner than later. And everybody wants, I know everybody wants quick money, but you know I'd like to be realistic. And it's thirty days, and I'm sure you're willing to wait thirty sixty days rather than eight months, if you could, right? If that was the option. So what that means is uh, it'll stop running if you had twenty percent. So if your hundred dollar account went and draw down $20 and got the $80, it will automatically stop all the trades, close them all out and stop trading. So you will still have 80 in there. If you put it at 20, 25, whatever that percentage is, um, stop running. Fixed lot size. That's what we talked about, 0 0.01. Y'all see at a $100 account, I'm at 0 0.01. Even at a $1,000 account, with the software, 0 0.01 is perfect because it's gonna put in a lot of trades and it's gonna actually grow the lot size. You know, for example, say for example, Harry, we got, you got a thousand dollar account. You have a trade in at 0 .01 and it's negative $5. The software says, hey, I need to get him in profit or at least break even. So I'm gonna put in a 0.10 in to offset it. So your 0 .01 is negative five, but the new trade is positive $10. So your 10 minus five means you still are in $5 profit. That's the okay. thing the software does, like artificial intelligence, right? On a new level, <laughs> basically, okay?
the level ranges, um, basically that's detailed. That's about 21. So every 21 pips that the market moves, the software is can put in a new trade. So for example, if you're in drawdown where it's a lot of negative, hey, I don't want to keep trading every 21. I'm going to change this to 50 because then the software won't take as many trades and it'll get you out of the negative sooner. Okay. You know, when you're working with software, it's, you know, learning it, it's amazing. It's crazy. So also what it does, like I said, the news. Once, if, if Donald Trump has a, a call at 9 p.m. Eastern about the U.S. dollar and taxes, at 845, the software knows don't trade because some news will come out. And if Donald Trump says some dumb shit like he usually do, right, people are going to be like, man, I'm, forget the U.S. dollar. Like China, they trying to get rid of using the U.S. dollar. Right. So that will make the value of the dollar go down. So that means your trades can go the wrong way real fast. So that's why we have this setting to make sure we stop trading. No new trades will come in. Um, but after the news, 15 minutes later, guess what? It'll start trading again and make sure we're pulling you back in profit. What's we also, this software called? Uh, it is called the Trade Ringer. Trade. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll shoot you the, um, I got like some more videos that I can shoot you to where you can, uh, you know, look at some more stuff. And, and also the other thing I like about it is, like I said, I trade Sunday through Wednesday, right? I don't trade on Thursday or Fridays and the software would know not to trade. And the beauty of it is like, once my goal is reached, it stops. Once my 5% to 10% goal is reached, it just automatically stops the software just stops it for you. Nothing else happens. You'll get a message with a smiley face in the corner. And then right here, it's going to say weekly goal reached. And when you see that, you go back to your um, Excel spreadsheet and check off that week. Week one done. Week two done. Week three done. You see what I'm saying? Hey, Travis. Yep. Yo, what's up, Cali? My man got, oh, Cali got the voice Fin on. Finally got the voice on. Finally got oh. the voice on. Uh -huh. So you only trade Monday through Wednesday, but you 5% for the whole week between Monday and Wednesday. And actually, sometimes, bro, I hit the goal before Wednesday. Sometimes it's okay. based on the market. I can hit it in 24 hours. I seen I started Sunday. It was done by Monday. Um, sometimes I'm done by Tuesday. Sometimes I'm done Wednesday morning, right? But um, no matter what, so if I don't hit my goal by Wednesday at 1%, I close my trades regardless, right? So I might only make 4%. I might only make 3%, but that's the rule and strategy I have, and I stick to it. Because what happens if I let it trade into Thursday and Friday, it's never been good. So guess what? I just don't do it. I, I've, you, ar I've already made the mistakes. What if you put your, um, like your stop loss at like 10%? So mm -hmm. that if you do go into Thursday, no matter if, like, you'll be good. Well, basically, uh, if you put your stop loss at like 10%, depending on what your goal is, um, it can almost be you giving away money, right? Because you got to trade to, like I said, it depends on your account size. You see what I'm saying? Because like if you got a $10,000 account, 10% 10 of that is $100. And it depends on your risk, right? So that question is a little difficult without knowing exactly how much money you got in? What are your weekly goals? You see yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, like okay. going, going into Thursday, what happens most of the time with the markets is the markets start to get volatile. And like I said, on Friday, the markets close. So if they get real volatile on Thursday, you get stuck in trades and in going into Friday and then going into the weekend. And you don't ever want to be in trades over the weekend. Like ever. Like, you no, know, you just don't want to do it. I've only had bad experiences doing that. Some people do it and it works well. I just choose not to. Like I said, I, I try to reduce my risk as much as possible. Don't get in harm's way and I won't get harmed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but, but at the same time, like what I always suggest, you know, with the software, with anything is like, Harry, like you got your demo account. Set up your demo connect the software and mess around with the settings. 
you may find a sweet spot. You may say, Trav, I can do 10%. If I put my equity here, if I put my lot size here, I only use three pairs instead of six pairs. Hey, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I can do it. And by all means, get it, right? I know some people doing 20% a week, right? Is it hot or risky? Yes, very risky. But like I was telling Callie earlier, um, and you probably heard me say this too, Harry, oatmeal is better than no meal. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you, you know where we from, bro. We done ate oodles and noodles together in the dorm plenty of times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Early. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all we had, baby. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? So, <laughs> but like I said, I would, rather, I would rather have 5% a week than no percent a week. Yeah. Little by little. You know, and the goal is, you know, $500 to $1,000 at 5%. We see we can turn that to 6 to 10K. You know, easily. You see what I'm saying? The whole thing is about, honestly, at this point, is just just running with it, getting started. You know, seeing what it's like for, for at least, nine, I always tell people, 90 days. Give yourself 90 days. If you don't like it, guess what you could tell yourself? Hey, I, I, I tried. It ain't work out. But what, what I don't want, what people hate a lot of times is I post and be like, bro, how do you make eight grand? I was like, bro, I already showed you. I already, already showed you how I did it. You know what I'm saying? You've been on the call with me. I already showed you. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Nothing different. Right? I put it in the system. I make it move. I, I, that's what I've done. You see what I'm saying? How much so, the software? The software, so to start off, is 240. Um, it creates your back office, your own private links, and all that stuff. And then it's 160, just like the education. is 240 because they create your own websites and all that stuff. So you pay that one-time activation fee, and then it's like 160 a month as well based on your package. But what they do is, you know, and that's why I say, you know, as a consultant, is it going to make sense for you to pay 160 for six months, right, plus your $5 investment to reach that after eight months? In certain cases, to you, it may be worth it. To others, it may not be. You see what I'm saying? But what I was able to do was what we call our three and free program. Like, for example, Harry, you get started. Okay. Harry, you get started. Callie signs up with you. Your other two friends sign up with you. So now you got three people signed up with you doing it too. Now your, your monthly is free because you help three people get connected. That's the, that's when that affiliate program basically starts is the three and free. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Three and free for a month or three and free? Well, month. well, if they're active every month, it's every month that they're active. Gotcha. That's every month that they're active. You know, and that's and that's the goal. Like, so, like, with me, I think I paid two months. And that was it. I don't think I've ever paid since then. And that's just because I was doing it. I'll post about it. i talk about it. People say, hey, I want to try it. They tried it, they liked it, and they stayed. Gotcha. <laughs> of course, I got more people than that now, so I'm making a little bit more money because of I'm helping more people, you know, but that goes into the residual side, and I, I honestly don't even think I have that because I really don't focus on networking and adding a team and stuff so much, really. But if y'all want to see it, I can find it. I don't know if that's something y'all want to look at. Yeah, I'm good, bro. If you can, you send me the link to the uh, trade ringer. I'm good on it too. Uh, you said the trade ringer. Yeah. Yeah, I can send you that joint. I'm gonna text that joint to you. Matter of fact, Cali, I'm gonna text it to you too. Just the okay. video joint. Um, uh, and how do I? You gonna put this on on the uh, YouTube channel? Yeah, I hold everything we're talking right now. We talked about I'm a, uh, after we end the call, it's going to download to my PC. Then I'm going to post it on YouTube. Oh, bad. bad. Mm -hmm. All right, bro. I okay, appreciate it. Sounds you, good. Yeah, and we, we back again Thursday. I'm going into uptrends and downtrends. So if y'all can make it on Thursday, I'm going to send a link out again for 9 p.m. Um, if y'all can't make it, of course, it's going to be recorded. Just uh, get back to the YouTube, of course. So, uh, all right, before I let y'all go, any questions? Y'all got anything? Anything y'all want me to look at? And if and if y'all find something researching, write write the joint down, right? And then on Thursday, if you get on, that's when we 
we one on one, three on one, four on one, or whatever again. All right. All right. Sounds good. Cool, cool. Appreciate y'all. Holla at me. All right, bro. I appreciate you. Have a good night. All right, now.